Thank you, praise team. Let's give him one more hand. It is my pleasure to stand before you. you may be seated. You may be seated. It is my pleasure to stand before you as your chaplain. It's good to say that I'm your chaplain. To introduce you to our chaplain, who is bringing the word this morning. If you would come on up. This is Chaplain Target Hand, and I will. Let him tell you the rest, because I'm just leading him myself. So the best intro is the one that he can give me. So preach the word, brother. Preach the word. And it's it's great to be here in Milton Hall. It's really good to see all your faces, all the warm, loving, respect, and open hearts that we've gotten since we've gotten here. So my name, my name is Chaplain Tarvik Linder, and this is my beautiful wife, Carolyn. Over there, very good. It's so it's okay to tell your wife she's beautiful every now and then. As a matter of fact, guys, you need to tell your wife she's beautiful every day. Because if you don't, somebody else will. <laughs> That's all right. So um, so we're coming here from Osan. Um, we're originally from North Carolina, and um, we'll be here for about three years. We're we're in the uh, special operations wing, and um, and I'm their chaplain. So, but I'm happy to stand here in front of you guys today. Um. If you don't mind, uh, let's pray together. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for everyone gathered here right now. Thank you that you know each and every one of us by name and have caused us to walk with you. We say that we are dependent on you and our trust is in you completely as we surrender ourselves in adoration. We ask that you would come by your Holy Spirit and inspire our hearts today. Come and fill our lives with your love and fill our conversations with your grace and your truth. And Lord, please fill this meaning, this meeting today with your presence. We ask for all of this in your glorious name, we praise you. Amen. So, um, a little bit about me and, and my, uh, my faith path, which is totally connected to the sermon today. Um, as you guys get to know me, as you guys see me more often, you're going to find out that I am a big fan of superheroes and comics and Marvel and all of those good things, right? Because when I was a little kid, I was totally addicted to Old Testament scripture. And for me, Old Testament scripture read just like a comic book. There were these, these, these eight-winged aliens with eyes and fire all over the place and magic coming down from the sky. And I was like, that's what I love. And I would read it all the time. And I got so, so deep into it, right? It's, it's, it's what led me on my journey um, to being here today. And so I would love to read stories like Samuel and, and about Elijah and all of the prophets and especially Ezekiel. So today's scripture today comes from the book of Ezekiel, um, chapter 37. And if it's okay with you, I'm going to read that to you. Valley of the Dry Bones. The hand of the Lord came upon me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me down in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones, and he led me all around them. There were very many lying in the valley, and they were very dry. He said to me, mortal, can these bones live? And I answered, only you know, Lord. And then he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, I will cause breath to enter you and you shall live. 
I will lay sinews on you and will cause flesh to come upon you and cover your skin and put breath in you and you shall live and you shall know that I am the Lord. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God. There's a story that I was telling you about my, my faith journey as a child. If any of you are, are, are hoping that you're all Christians in here, but if not, you've been to church for a while, sometimes that journey that we have has a lot of bumps in it because this journey has not been perfect. So our lives have not been perfect. And our church journey has not been perfect. So in that church journey, I ask this question, where is the hope? of the faithful? Where is the hope that the faithful speak of on Sunday mornings? Does it take a vacation on Monday? Sometimes it seems like it. Is God active in our lives only when everything seems to be going our way? So walk back with me a little bit concerning Ezekiel. This guy who was like a DC comic book character to me when I was a kid. Leading up to chapter 37, we were told that God's promise to restore God's people was on its way. And Ezekiel was given a mission by God to minister to a rebellious, faithless, spiritless, and defeated people. And he had been proclaiming the word of God for 22 years, but yet the people still refused to listen to him. But see, here, here's the thing. This is the thing you guys might not know about. Ezekiel, he was a weird guy. Like, it wasn't just him standing there prophesying, thus says the Lord that this will happen to my people. No, Ezekiel was doing like little skits on the side of the road. Like, he would lay down and, like, put his head, like, on, on burnt food and say, this is what's going to happen. And I'm not going to tell you, but I just want you to figure it out. So, like, people, people had a hard time, like, really following what Ezekiel was saying. But he was following exactly what God had told him to do. So their temples were torn down, and their people were scattered. They were killed and they were imprisoned. And a once proud and mighty people stood separated from their blessings and they separated themselves from God because they had not listened to the instruction about obedience. They tried to run their own show. They became stiff-necked, stagnant, shameless. Perhaps they thought they could get away with treating people any way that they wanted to, right? Perhaps they thought that God was not paying attention to their actions. Or even perhaps they thought that they were God. Regardless, God was not pleased and began to teach the Israelites about suffering, hope, and restoration. So what is that feeling of anticipation of the future and the present? We call it hope. It's a state of anticipation, and it's crucial for a healthy human existence. And it's a really important concept in the Bible, hope, that is. In fact, there are so many words in the ancient uh, uh, Old Testament language about hope, two of them one of them is called yakal, which simply means to wait for. Like in the story of Noah and the ark, as the flood waters received, Noah had to yakal for weeks. He had to wait for the waters to recede. The other one was called kava, which means also means to wait, but it's more like the stretching of a tight rubber band or a tight cord as this anticipation happens for the release. These two meanings of hope and of anticipation are all through the Old Testament scripture. And just like Ezekiel, 
It's my desire and it's my calling to prophesy to the bones that I see about hope. But I don't generate the hope. I'm just the vessel. Rather, hope is a gift from God. Hope is a gift from God, the animator, the breath of hope, and the breath of life. And Ezekiel makes it clear that that divine breath, that his spirit is what stirs life in the valley of dry bones. So one of the other things that you're going to learn about me, um, in addition to my love for comics, is um, my love for song. And you guys sounded great this morning. Drums were on, piano was on, harmonies were on. You guys were just great. Um, but sometimes I find I find God in, in other songs outside of our contemporary Christian worship. So if you know this song, if you're old enough to know this song, sing along with me. Mother, mother, there's too many of you around here. Brother, brother, brother. There's far too many of you down here. You know we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. Hey, Father, Father, we don't need to escalate. War is not the answer. For only love can conquer hate. You know we've got to find a way to bring some loving here today. The picket lines, the picket signs, don't punish me with brutality. Talk to me so you can see. What's going on? What's going on? Oh, what's going on? What's going on? Who in here is old enough to know that song? All right? It's got to be like five of y'all. Right? It's old enough to know this song. This song, it's Marvin Gaye's What's Going On. You see, I see that song as a modern day spiritual. It's rooted in the desire to speak love and hope in the face of violence and division and hatred. See, this song was written in the early 70s, but its message still speaks true today. That's the same for all of the African-American spirituals and their, and their message of hope. Although it's written for a different age, what's going on is an applicable message for our era. And in my opinion, that is the interesting thing about hope and the cause for hope. That no matter what generation it is, the cause and the solution are still the same. Hope today is in the happiness of the laughter and the cries of our children. Hope is in the love and understanding that all people are the same people, regardless of skin color, regardless of their region of origin, regardless of their religious or cultural background, that all of us deserve the same amount of love that God has given to each and every one of us from each other. No matter what year it is, Hatred is always rooted in violence, but the love of humanity for each other and the love that humanity has for God will always be the solution. And hope is the knowledge. Hope, I say, is the knowledge and assurance that love will always conquer hate. Why, Chaplain? Why are you? What's the point of, of, of you talking to us about $10 theological terms and old dry bones and old music? Why? Man, y'all about to get tired of me. Why? Because the most of us 
as we wear this cross on our chest and we walk through the world with our Bibles and, and our highlights and our, and, our, and our markers, all of us are walking through Christianity today with very little faith and no power. Chaplain, you ain't gonna let me preach today no more because uh, I already know. See, our loss of hope has left our lives with no vision. Our loss of hope has left our lives with no wisdom and no ingenuity and imprisoned us in societal graves of despair. We have slipped into a form of spiritual and physical death just like those, vo those bones in the valley. And we have become content with living our lives with no hope and no anticipation. Content with living with no belief and no desire and no endurance and no reaching for the goal. And at the same time, we've become so used to it that we have no expectation for things to change. So in Ezekiel's vision, God instructs him to walk around and observe the dead, dry, dull, lifeless fragments of the promises of yesterday. And they look to him, they look beyond repair. And God asks the question to Ezekiel, can these bones live, I ask you? Is it possible to restore life where dreams are broken? Is it possible to restore life where relationships are broken? Is it possible when our aspirations and our spirits are broken? Ezekiel says, God, only you know the answer to that. But he was obedient. He spoke in the power and the authority that he was given. Hear the word of the Lord, he said, and the bones began to change form. You see, they began to become reconciled with the parts that they had become long separated from. See, I don't know if this, I don't know if this church is used to saying amen or anything like this, but you see, church, I, I, I just need somebody to understand what I'm saying right now this morning, that, that this message is not about a skeleton. That everything that had become, that was broken, had once become back into the shape that had come from before. What was once dead was now restored by the power of our mighty God doing a miraculous work in the valley of a nation that had been long forgotten about. How many of you know that I'm talking more than just an image? How many of you know that I'm talking about your life, your marriage, your finances, your children, your family, and not just that, your physical health, your mental health, how long are you going to let the parts of your life lie broken and useless? So I'm asking you today to wake up and speak life back into the blessings that God gave you. Wake up and walk in the God-given authority that he gave you. Allow your voice to be used to speak life into every situation that vexes you. I don't care if it's your situation with your in-laws. I don't care if it's your situation at work. I don't care if it's a financial situation. You have the power to speak life back into that situation because God said so. And he said it to you. And here's the example of it. Now, once God had reconciled these bones, it wasn't time to become complacent. Each was then imbued with the breath of life by the indwelling of the Holy Spirit, and life had returned, and hope began to grow again. Ezekiel's vision was a message of hope for his nation, and it was a message of hope for our nation. We can speak life into our present lives because we know that in the end, our God is the final decider on all things. And so, my friends, the truth is that nothing is ever too hard for God. I know you believe it because you just sat up here and you sang about it. You go home every day and you pray about it. God is the final decider in all things in our, in our lives. And so the connection to all of that is that 
that suffering and the hope and the restoration that God was talking about to the people of Israel way on back then. That hope that we have today, somebody asked me, where is that hope? Who is that hope? There's a name. Oh, I'm interactive. Who is that hope that we have today? Jesus is that hope. And everything about him, all everything about his suffering, everything about what he taught us is what we should use to speak life and to live life into every situation that we have today. When things get tough, that is where you go. That is who we depend on. That is who has paid the price for every sin that you have ever committed or will commit. It's already done. That mission is completed. The work is already done. All you have to do, my friends and family, is just speak the words because the power is already there in your lives, in your voices. But the enemy right now just doesn't want you to know it. He wants you to think that, oh, my God, I don't look the right way because social media tells me that I should look this way. That, that, that I don't have the best job or my family is suffering because of this, because of that. These are the lies that the enemy tells us each and every day. And you cannot listen to these lies. You must use the word of God to fight that battle of the mind every day. And, and chap, I struggle with that battle too. Each and every one of us struggles with that battle. Don't think that you're alone because that's the other lie that the enemy also tells you is that you're alone and nobody else is suffering like you and it's all your fault. Or it must be just me. Right? <laughs> don't let the enemy lie to you anymore. Don't let the enemy tell you that you don't have any more power over your lives anymore. So I ask you this week, is to remind yourself that when you see that struggle coming, when you're at home at night and you feel the tensions of everything of, of what life puts upon you, speak power into that moment. Speak to those dry bones and tell them to live, not because you think so, but because God has told you so. Let us pray. All powerful God, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all things. And it is in you, Lord, that our hope for all things lives and rests. Thank you for your son, Jesus, who died for our sins. Thank you for Jesus conquering death for us. Bless us this week as we are reminded each day that you have given us the power to speak life into the blessings that you have given us. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray.